Hey, and welcome to Tech for PD. I'm Chad. And I'm Jim. Today we're going to talk about the intersection of mobile devices, mobile technology, and PLM. Chad, why don't you uh, set the stage? Why are we talking about this? Yeah. So I think uh, there's a couple of factors that, that make this a relevant topic for PLM, and one is the explosion of mobile devices. Yeah. Whether it's smartphones or tablets, what have you, um, pretty much everyone has this type of device nowadays. And also, uh, what goes hand in hand with that is the advent of BYOD, bring your own device to work. Right. Right. So um, not only are these devices available now, but their capabilities are pretty, pretty powerful. So you look at you know, just they have accelerometers, they have GPS capabilities, high definition cameras, even that you can start taking measurements off of. I mean, it's pretty incredible what these devices can do nowadays. So I think a new technology platform is now available right. and makes it more accessible. Yeah. And, and I think also what we're seeing is this um, explosion of devices and explosion of applications that we're using in our personal lives. People are used to being able to do things a different way when they want, where they want and having the data that they want at their fingertips and being able to share it and communicate with the people that they want to. So um, people are now starting to expect that sort of thing, yeah. not just in their personal lives, but in their business life. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a number of different software providers that are now coming out with mobile apps, whether you know it runs on a variety of different devices. So PTC is one that mm -hmm. has some access to Windchill, um, Siemens PLM has some access to, to, uh, to Team Center, uh, as well as Aris. You know, they've, they've come yeah. out with a mobile device as well. Yeah, and, and it's not just the, the large vendors. It's also some of the third parties are working on that. Yep. Um, I, I'm aware of one that has been writing things like engineering change um, applications that fit in with Agile. Um, and also, I think it's, it's interesting here to include cloud um, in this, yeah. in this uh, conversation because it's, it's a device thing. Um, and maybe not an app thing as much as people are now just expecting to be able to access things, you know, access things anytime, anywhere, and on any device. And that's the kind of thing that Autodesk, for example, with PLM 360 is looking at is mm -hmm. saying, hey, you know, this is cloud. Whatever device you have, you're going to have access to it wherever you are. And right. uh, I think that's really some compelling uh, changes as well. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that sets the stage. Let's get into the debate. All right, well, let's get into it. So, Jim, uh, you start first. Where do you think the biggest value is for mobility for PLMs? Right. So I, I think the biggest value for mobility and PLM in the near term is going to be taking existing data, existing processes, things that are already in the PLM infrastructure, and extending them to the mobile environment. Okay. So um, things like engineering change processes, um, you know, information that you've uh, that you've already gathered in terms of viewables, making those accessible to a broader range of people because mm -hmm. they can get to it anywhere, anytime. That yeah, to me sure. is where we're going to get the most value. Okay. And yeah. You? I think there's value there. I think there's actually a lot more value in having apps that leverage the capabilities of these devices. Not, not just make it, not just leverage the mobile browser, but leverage the capabilities of the device like, for example, accelerometers, the GPS, um, the high-definition camera, which, you know, can I even take measurements nowadays. Um, I think there's a lot more value there than just a mobile browser. Yeah. I, I, and I do think there's a lot of value there. I'm not, I would never question that. Um, and I think we can find new business value and rethink the way we do things. But right now, there's so much value that's available from PLM by sharing it with more people. Mm -hmm. So... Um, taking, for example, into the plant, um, if somebody's working on, um, you know, a piece of agricultural equipment or an airframe, being able to take a tablet with them, climb up a ladder, get onto a, a device, bring that with them to, to see a service, you know, to see, to see a, um, an assembly instruction, for example, mm -hmm. or somebody out in the field that's trying to maintain a piece of capital equipment, industrial equipment, for example. Yeah being able to to bring up service procedures or, or just even just verify that a part is you know is the right part yeah. by being able to to spin it rotate it and 
and all that information is already in your PLM system. Yeah. All you're doing is adding access to another person <laughs> in a new location. Well, let's talk about a couple of scenarios that, that you just mentioned, and, and one in particular, the, uh, the service mm-hmm. instructions. Imagine taking your device and taking a picture of the area that you want to service, and it, through recognition, it comes up with the applicable procedures. You select one, and then it has a 3D animated overlay on top of the image that you've taken. Right? So then it becomes not just access, but it really leads, it provides the right context to do the job at hand. Yeah. So I think there's there's a lot more value there, far more than a browser can. But also a lot more cost and the time that it's going to take to get there. I think we'll mm. I think we'll end up there. Um, but you but you think today that the biggest source of value is going to be by um, specialized specialized apps, apps. and I, and I think it's from extending <clears throat> what exists onto new devices and new places. Okay. All right. Well, they get to decide. That's true. So, Chad, if you look in your crystal ball, what do you see happening over, say, the next five years with mobile and PLM? Well, I, I think there's going to be improvements in a couple different directions. I mean, one is the devices themselves. So you look at something like Google Glass, you know, the eyeglasses that basically will show you updates uh, or you can give it commands. I, I think there's a real opportunity there. Uh, but also look at something like the Pebble Watch, right? So these mobile devices aren't just smartphone phones and tablets anymore. You know, they're much smaller devices. I think there's a tremendous opportunity there. Yeah, what about we're going to see an explosion of devices. I yeah. mean, we have, we have no idea what's coming. It's going to be, it's going to be really fun to watch. Um, and now uh, most of them will be applied personally first before business, but um, yeah. we'll roll over into business. Um, I think the other thing too is augmented reality. The ability for the intersection between what's real and what's virtual, particularly in PLM, going out and saying, okay, here's, here's, uh, you know, here's the piece of equipment, um, but then looking at that and being able to find out a bill of material and maybe even serial numbers for the components and where can I get a replacement part for this. Uh-huh. And all of that information just being at your fingertips, pretty, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty powerful. Um, I think there's also an opportunity to have more, I guess, two things, role-based apps. Mm-hmm. So recognizing the job that a single role needs to do on a day-to-day basis and mm-hmm. having apps focused on that. And that means that probably a lot of the capabilities that are splintered across different products today, maybe CAD or simulation or or CAM or PDM and PLM, probably need to pull be pulled together into an app. Uh, and actually, that gets to kind of apping the process, which yeah. we've talked about before. You know, getting the right capabilities for the role to do their job. And sort of mashing them up together. Yeah, you got it. Um, and I and I do think I do think when you start to look forward at uh, how are we really going to get value, it's going to be about doing brand new things that we haven't thought about today. But mm-hmm. um, you know, e- even doing things like sharing a, a, a potential new product or configuring a product on on an iPad or, or another tablet, um, it's just, you know, it's going to drive higher level value. It's going to be a, a, a competitive advantage. So I, absolutely yeah. worth, uh, worth following this space. Yeah, it's going to be great. Fun. Great thoughts. So anyway, more importantly, let's, uh, let's figure out who lost and who won <laughs> last time and what the consequences are. All right. You're not going to believe this, people. Uh, obviously, the audience was misinformed, misguided, or just thought Chad was cute or something because I lost this one, and uh, I can't believe it, Greg. I, I really, Jim, I couldn't believe it myself. I thought this one was a slam dunk for you. I mean, you didn't even mention the word integration. I mean, how did you lose this debate? <laughs> Chad actually wanted integration. I actually went against integration. <laughs> <laughs> yes all right thank you for joining us on this episode of tech for pd also thanks to our uh, sponsor autodesk and our founding sponsor ptc see you next time